Our current U.S. global fertilizer and chemical base model is not sustainable. If it is allowed to persist, it will destroy everything, soils, food, and health. Glyphosate persists in the soil. When Monsanto first brought this out, they told us it was biodegradable in about seven days. This emphatically is not true. It persists for a very, very long time. The half-life of glyphosate in a soil with a CEC of 20 to 25 is approximately 22 years. That means if there's five pounds of glyphosate in the soil, in approximately 22 years, there'll be two and a half pounds. Another 22 years, there'll be a pound and a quarter. In another 22 years, there'll be five eighths of a pound. This is a very, very long lasting pernicious chemical and it doesn't leave easily. It is a triple negative charge. It binds to calcium and magnesium and potassium, anything with a positive charge, and it does not degrade. It may detoxify by binding, but it doesn't degrade. Glyphosate can be pushed off of a clay particle or a soil particle and back into the so soil solution by phosphate, also triple negative charged. When glyphosate is pushed off, it moves back into solution and into the plant because the plant does not distinguish between glyphosate and phosphate. Here's an example of a farm that I'm familiar with in Montana. Newly certified organic farm. Takes three years in preparation period to become qualified. They produced an organic lentil crop. The lentils were sent to Japan and rejected because of excess glyphosate levels greater than 10 parts per billion in the crop. Prior to the organic preparation and certification of the farm, the farm used glyphosate for weed control and weed desiccin. The organic crop of lentils was self-contaminated by the residual soil-based glyphosate. As we use glyphosate as a burn down or weed control, it impairs non-target plants. Glyphosate leads to the oxidative stress, especially in roots. The proline, ascorbate, and glutathione levels are changed upon the exposure to glyphosate. In 2016, 70% of Americans had detectable levels of glyphosate in their system. Between 1993 and 2016, the glyphosate levels in people's bodies increased by over 1,200%. People who try to eat organic regularly have about an 80% lower level of glyphosate than those who rarely eat organically. Glyphosate adjuvant toxicity. Researchers found that the adjuvants added to glyphosate-based herbicides are up to a thousand times more toxic than the glyphosate itself. Quote, the point I'm trying to raise is that glyphosate without adjuvants is not very useful. Therefore, manufacturers have added these additional toxic chemicals into glyphosate and nobody's talking about them. Over the last 25 years, the pesticide industry had hoodwinked us by referring only to glyphosate and not to the adjuvants or additive included in these herbicides. Nine of the 10 additional adjuvants in glyphosate are massively more toxic than the glyphosate itself, up to a thousand times more toxic. Fertilizer in the U.S. and globally has increased. Just in the U.S. alone, 1965, our farms used 46.3 million metric tons of fertilizer. By 2021, we were applying 195.38 million tons 
of fertilizer. And that is up 10% from the previous year. So we're steadily increasing. Glyphosate alone has increased 2,700% from 1987 when our farms applied 11 million pounds of glyphosate to 2023 when our U.S. farms applied 300 million pounds of glyphosate. Between 1994 and 2014, U.S. farms have applied 3 billion pounds of glyphosate over 298 million acres. Ionization of synthetic chemicals mimics the same damage of atomic fallout. In 1962, 730 million pounds of synthetic pesticides alone were used globally. By 1972, that increased to 1,158,000,000 pounds of synthetic pesticides alone. This is exclusive of fungicides, herbicides, and desiccants. Dr. Mosca computed that 1 billion pounds of synthetic pesticide matches the cellular damage equivalent of 72,500 atomic bombs. These are the type we dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and that is annually to this planet. And this is all pre-glyphosate or Roundup. Currently, glyphosate alone exceeds 5 billion pounds annually. And this is over the entire globe. The U.S. alone in 2023 applied 300 million pounds of glyphosate only. This does not include other farm chemicals of pesticides, fungicides, desiccants, and insecticides which is now in excess of 1 billion pounds per year in total. Total agricultural chemical use in the United States is over 1 billion pounds of chemical pesticides that include herbicides, fungicides, and insecticides and desiccants. Globally, annually, we exceed 5.6 billion pounds of chemical pesticides that include herbicides, fungicides, insecticides, desiccants. This is where we are worldwide in our agriculture. In 1972, we used 1,158,000,000 pounds of synthetic pesticides. And these produced enough atomic radiation and cellular damage that we, the equivalent was 72,500 atomic bombs. In 2023, worldwide, we used 5,600,000,000 pounds of synthetic pesticides that produced enough atomic radiation and cellular damage equivalent to 350,600 atomic bombs annually to our planet. In 2023, the U.S. alone exceeded 1 billion pounds of synthetic pesticides and agricultural chemicals, and this includes 300 million pounds of glyphosate. And this produces enough atomic radiation cellular damage equivalent to 72,500 atomic bombs annually to America. How is this even sustainable? Nothing can outlive these levels of radiation and cellular toxicity. Our soils have accumulated such a devastating amount of chemical toxicity from the relentless and increasing rates of pesticides. This includes herbicides, fungicides, and insecticides and the synthetic-based fertilizers, 
so that not only do we not have the correct balance of microorganisms in our soils, but it is no longer possible to remotely produce the CO2 needed to get anywhere near the plant's genetic potential to produce yields. CO2 is our most limiting plant nutrient. This system will have to end either by environment, health or government regulations, or if we actually become wise enough to stop it ourselves. When this happens, where will you go? We're going to have to return to the natural, mineral, and biological based systems that we have spent the last hundred plus years destroying. This is the only system that has worked for thousands of years to produce food and sustain life that will not destroy itself and all higher life forms with it. The question is, when will you start? The longer you wait, the more damage and toxicity you build up in your soils, the harder it will be to turn things around and the longer it will take to do it. At some point, you will not be able to regenerate enough soil health fast enough to remain in business. So start now to begin implementing biological principles and products to begin the transition before it's too late. Within the structure of all life, there is a divine intelligent order that governs the physiological laws relating to its structure and functions encompassing all metabolic processes. This is for soils, plants, animals, and mankind. These laws are all mineral and biological based. The synthetic and chemical based approach is in direct violation of natural laws. We are stewards here. You cannot continuously apply these toxic chemicals into the soil without consequences. Your lands will become uninhabitable. Your crops will become inedible. Your lives will become unlivable. We must develop a personal consciousness about how we intentionally engage in agriculture that we are stewards over. We should be wise stewards, not unknowing destroyers. So the question is, what will you give to the next generations? Section 9 Summary Glyphosate can take up to 100 years to break down once you stop using it. From 1993 to 2016, the glyphosate levels in our bodies increased by over 1,200%. The adjuvants within glyphosate are up to a thousand times more toxic than glyphosate itself. And we don't even talk about these. Fertilizer and chemical usage has increased dramatically over time. Synthetic chemicals mimic atomic fallout radiation. In 1972, with just over a billion pounds of synthetic pesticides alone, we had the atomic radiation cellular damage equivalent of over 72,500 atomic bombs globally each year. By 2023, that had increased to 5 billion 600 million pounds of synthetic pesticides. The atomic radiation cell damage equivalent is now over 350,000 atomic bombs globally every year. The United States alone, just in 2023, applied over 300 million pounds of glyphosate. And we applied over 1 billion pounds of pesticides. This atomic radiation, cellular damage equivalent, is over 200,000 atomic bombs annually. Will we change before it's too late? 
I'd like to thank you for taking the time to view this material and I hope it's helpful in your crop, food, and nutrient planning. Take care.